Hey everyone, Jennifer here. Today I'm talking about whether or not I think you should buy EF lenses in 2022. I won't really be discussing any of the RF L line lenses today. I'll mostly be discussing some of the more inexpensive or budget friendly options from Canon on the um, RF side of things and what I think might be or might not be better options uh, in the EF line. First lens combo I wanna talk about today is actually the new RF85 F2 as compared to the EF8518. And also another option. So the new RF85 F2 is 549. It's on sale right now. It's normally 599. And then the EF is 499 as of right now. I actually have the EF version and I have used the RF version. I don't wanna talk a lot about this EF version because it's definitely not nearly as good. It's not as sharp. The motors on the EF version are, are very clunky and the RF version, it just looks a lot better. The new glass that um, Canon has made, all of it is really superior, but that doesn't mean that there aren't EF options and there might be specific reasons why you would wanna go that route. The reason why I bring this up is because I actually recently just picked up the 100 millimeter macro, the EF version. I bought it used for around $600 and I got this for a very specific purpose. So just know that when I'm talking about these lenses, I do have specific purposes for these. So I actually got this for its macro capability. You might be thinking, that lens is worthless if you're not using this for macro. If I don't have a reason to have that, like for instance, obviously I'm a wedding photographer, so I don't have any macro lenses. This is something that I've really needed to add to my kit. So I've finally done that for ring shots and for close up, but I just want to tell you about how good this is for portraits as well. I'm gonna show you a few images from the EF8518, the RF, 85 f2 and the 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 ef 100 millimeter because i took a bunch of sample images and i've also got some some uh, a macro shot to show you of the 100 mil up against the new rf 85 which is not a macro but you might be thinking can i get by with this 85 to do some of those shots that i need for details and also the focusing distance between all three lenses. I think that you might find that um, for around the same price, you can actually get that 100 mil macro, which is an L lens that EF version used is now um, pretty affordable at this point. And if you're a wedding photographer, especially, this is a good lens to have in your kit. You might be one of those people that says, I want a 35 and an 85 all day and I don't need a 100 mil macro. Hey, that's awesome. I think that something like this is, is a great addition to the kit if you're someone like me who's looking for that extra depth of field and that really shallow look when I'm doing the detail shots, which is something I've never had. And I'm actually going to show you a ring shot that I did um, this month at a wedding with the 35, the RF 35 and the silver line there that actually looks really good, but it's it's just not quite there, which is kind of what pushed me in this direction. And I wanted to check out that 85 RF to see, is this something that I want? And I believe that my decision to get that EF lens was a good decision. Check out the shots. The next lens I'd like to talk about is the 35 RF, which is a 1.8, and the 40 millimeter pancake, which is an EF lens. It's actually on here and actually is a macro. When I just previously said I didn't have one, which is good. We're gonna look at the difference between the 35 and the macro uh, 40 millimeter pancake. So that RF 35 is 549. It's on sale right now. It's regular 599. So another one of those silver line lenses for around $600. And then the 40 millimeter pancake is 180, I think. Incredibly for affordable lens, but it's a 2.8. So that's something to consider because usually when you get into that prime, you're doing that for the purpose of the aperture. 
What I'd like to do is show you some images from both of these, but let's talk about it. I picked up this 40 millimeter pancake as a little bit wider, originally wider than anything else that I had. And that was a prime and it was small enough to fit on my camera and, and whatnot. I've pretty much outgrown this lens. I think that for someone that's starting out who needs something really light and inexpensive, this is a really good lens. You're not gonna get that shallow depth of field on this lens at all, but if you're just trying to do street photography or you're going out um, trying to do portraits kind of on the closer, closer range, and I'm, I'll show you what I mean. If you're, if you're taking like family shots at a little bit of a distance, not a far distance, but kind of full body or, or close to, it's not the greatest. I would say it's definitely better a little bit closer, but I could say the same thing about that RF 35. If you've seen any of my other videos, you're probably aware that I absolutely love that 35. It's miles beyond this lens. I definitely think if you have the budget to go up to like five, fifty, six hundred dollars $600, you're a hundred times better off with the 35 millimeter RF than this 40 millimeter. I would not purchase this lens, especially based on the aperture. That's my opinion. Another option that sort of takes all of this across the board is the 24 to 70 in the EF. Should you just pick up that one lens, I'm gonna look up the price right now. Should you just pick up the Canon EF 24 to 70 and call it good? In my opinion, no. I don't think you should do that. That is a 2.8 lens, which we've talked about previously with the aperture. It's $18.99. So you're kind of looking at should I pick up a 35 and an 85, which is basically, it's cheaper. When I say they were 550 each or something, basically for 1200 bucks, you could get an 85 F2 and a uh, 35 one eight in the new lenses. So you don't need the adapter. You may already have it. I don't know. The reason why I don't love the 24 to 70 is it's just doesn't give you the sharp prime look. It, it shines when you need it but it's not a portrait lens. I used that lens for a long time, especially the first version of the 24 to 70. I keep it in my kit for those times when I feel like I really need it if I'm in a crunch. But if you're starting out, which I guess this video is, is sort of a beginner's video, I, I know that it can be tempting to say, I need that zoom lens so I have that long focal range, but you'll find out quickly that you're not getting the images that you want, that you're looking at online, that you're trying to achieve. Part of that's probably skill level, but a huge part of that is also the fact that that lens is just not built to do the things that a prime lens does. And I'm going to show you an example of that as well after this, so you can see why it would be wiser to buy two primes. And it doesn't have to be the 35 and 85. I haven't brought up the 50. I'm not crazy over, over the, um, the more inexpensive 50s, especially the EF version. I'm not talking the nifty 50, I'm talking the EF 50 must be a 1.8. It's probably, again, it's in that, in the EF it's the gold line and there's a silver line one. Maybe not, maybe it's just the nifty 50 and the silver line. I apologize in the RF, but those, I don't, I don't love either of those lenses. I don't, I don't necessarily recommend those. Thanks for watching as always. And I hope this was informative to you and kind of can help you make some decisions if you're in the lens market or if you're wondering if it's time to go into the RF line. Peace.